Today we're going to talk about a future Doomsday Y2K-like event, which some people refer to as Y2K38, or the end of 32-bit Unix time. Now, considering that Y2K happened 23 years ago, before many of you were even born, I guess it's worth a recap. So most of the computer programs that were written from the 1960s through the 1980s, they would typically only use two digits to represent the year. Things like 66 would be 1966, 84 would represent 1984, and so on. But obviously, this couldn't go on past the turn of the century, and those old programs from the 80s had to be patched before the year 2000 so that records wouldn't be off by 100 years. Now, a big reason why programmers wrote their programs this way and people wanted to store dates this way was to save storage space, which used to be very, very expensive. Literally every byte counted when you were programming or you were storing data a few decades ago. Like if you needed to store accounting records, for example, every entry is gonna have a date, right? If you wanted to store that on something like an IBM 1405, which is one of the better disks that they had back in 1960, that giant thing only holds a total of 10 megabytes of data and it cost $36,000 in 1960s money, which is about $355,000 today after inflation. So to store just one extra byte, which is probably about what you would need to write 1960 instead of 60, that's gonna cost you an extra three cents for each record that you have to store. And that adds up really fast. So it made sense to be extremely efficient with date storage back in the 60s and you know even in the 70s and starting to go into the 80s but by the 90s the price of storage the price per megabyte on storage was tens of thousands of times cheaper and of course it was much much smaller and it was much easier to replace and it was also quicker to find replacements since there were a lot of different manufacturers that were making storage disks at this point so yeah by the 90s, the hardware could more than accommodate those software updates. It was fine. We could represent the entire year. And so no serious errors really happened. Things were patched by midnight of January 1st, 2000. Now, Y2K38 is a similar situation where on January 19th, 2038, at 314 a.m. in seven seconds, UTC, the Unix time or the number of seconds since the start of the Unix epoch will reach its maximum signed 32-bit value. Now, if you're unsure what that means or what signed 32-bit values mean, I suggest watching my video about signed and unsigned binary numbers, but on that special date and time, 2,147,483,647 seconds will have passed since the date January 1st, 1970 at 12 a.m. UTC, which just happens to be the exact date and time that Unix time became the standard for measuring the date and time in computer systems, and thus, that exact date and time marks the beginning of the Unix epoch. So ultimately, what Unix time does is it counts the number of seconds before or after the Unix epoch, and this is the underlying system that all modern computer programs since the 1970s use for their timestamps. But of course, since it's most commonly stored as a 32-bit signed integer, it's going to overflow on January the 19th, 2038 at 314 a.m. and eight seconds UTC, which in binary is actually going to flip the bit that's used for signing to negative. And it's actually going to give us the lowest possible value of 2.147 billion seconds before the Unix epoch, negative 2.147 billion uh, in binary with 
a human readable date of December the 13th, 1901. So obviously computers are going to be really confused if this bug isn't patched by then about what time it really is. Just imagine all of the issues with computers being off by almost 140 years. Now, there is a solution to the 32-bit Unix time overflow problem, and that is to simply start storing Unix time, or time since the Unix epoch, as a signed 64-bit integer instead. Very easy to do, because pretty much all systems and programs these days are 64-bit anyway. It's actually been that way for some time now. And even true 32-bit systems are capable of understanding 64-bit integers with some clever tricks. So it's totally possible to patch those very old legacy systems if they are even still going to be used 15 years from now, uh, no problem. Now, it doesn't mean that there isn't any work to be done at all before 2038. There's several popular open source programs and likely many proprietary ones as well that have year 2038 bugs in them right now, like Python, MariaDB, and TCL. So yeah, there is definitely some more work to be done. And since this is a bug that affects timestamps, it actually needs to be done before the end of the 32-bit Unix epoch because some of those timestamps are used for future dates, like expiration dates for SSL certificates, as an example. But like I said, in most cases, it should be as simple as just using 64-bit signed integers, which 32-bit systems are capable of understanding. And of course, 64-bit integers, they give us plenty of seconds for the Unix epoch, because when we double our bits, our ability to encode data actually increases exponentially. In fact, with 64-bit signed integers, we can store enough seconds to represent dates more than 292 billion years in the future. And of course, since we're signed, we can have negative numbers and go backwards that far as well. But since the universe is only about 14 billion years old, there really isn't a time before that that would have any meaning to us. So yeah, 64-bit signed integers are the way to go. They pretty much cover all of time ever as far as humans are concerned. And if there is some kind of human or more likely a product of humanity, like a robot AI that's floating around in space, that is there still using Unix time as its standard of timekeeping, then it's gonna have plenty of time to figure out another solution to the year 292 billion, 277 million, and so on problem. You know, at that point, just go ahead and start using 128-bit signed integers. Then whatever Android abomination is floating around in space is gonna have the ability to keep time until the beginning of the heat death of the universe where everything but black holes will have decayed into background radiation. Isn't that lovely? So yeah. Y2K38 will probably not be that big of a deal. Most of the software out there does seem to be patched already. Um, there does appear to be a few Python libraries with Y2K38 bugs in them though. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on if you are a Python programmer, especially if you're actually using any of these libraries. Maybe you could help patch these bugs and be a legend like the people who patched Y2K bugs back in the day. But if I had to guess, the biggest problem with Y2K38 is gonna be the same one that Y2K had, which is the hype. People not understanding the underlying issues and getting just super into doomsday predictions, just like in 2012. I remember that one, I'm sure a lot of you do as well, or the end of 1999. I mean, a lot of that was with Y2K, but there were other non Y2K doomsday predictions then. Uh, there's also some interesting facts about the Y2K38 bug that may attract some even more conspiratorial people, like the fact that if 32-bit Unix time did overflow to December the 13th, 1901, that date is actually a Friday the 13th. Very spooky. So maybe that's going to become part of the doomsday lore. Also, pi o'clock, 3, uh, 3.14 a.m. on January 19th, 
2038 is when things are supposed to go down. So maybe that has some significance too, you know, pie o'clock. We'll just have to wait and see in 15 years how people react to the doomsday prediction. But let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think? Will all the software be patched? before Y2K38? Or do you think that some things are gonna slip through the cracks and cause problems in that year? Like and share to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.